Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing very well today, as always. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an updated version of my Twisting Blades Rogue. A lot of you were asking about our video we posted last week because there were some nerfs. Is the build still viable? Does it still work? I played through the entire campaign with it. I leveled up a few levels after to hit level 50, and I'm happy to report things are going wonderfully. So I'm going to update you guys on the build, but I would also like to progress my character. I've done a lot of things on World Tier 2, which was the hardest difficulty I had unlocked for me at the beginning of the game. But if we complete this Keystone Dungeon, we unlock the ability to then go to World Tier 3. And I would very much like to tackle that in today's video as well. Back in Diablo 3, we used to do these videos where I introduced the character and then we had progressive steps throughout the season, kind of the big steps in the journey I was taking throughout the season to progress the character. And I feel like this is our first big step for our rogue as well. So what is our build? What does it do? We're going back into the same dungeon. I'll show you really quick just to catch you up to speed. I'll show off my talent tree, a little bit of my gear, and then we'll jump into that dungeon at the end. So this is basically how the build works and what it excels at. We want to move around as much as possible to avoid damage. We also want to imbue our weapon with this shadow damage. And then basically once we decide to fight an elite, that elite is going to be crowd controlled for the rest of their time on this earth. Most enemies do not have a chance to fight back. Most elites don't have a chance to fight back. Against bosses, we're also racking up that stagger damage so we can stun them and deal more damage. So I want to conceal, imbue, and then right click on this guy. As soon as he goes vulnerable, you see he falls down and then we can keep on keeping on. The objective of this dungeon is to simply gather souls from elites to open the first door. And as you can see, we can kind of target farm the enemies we are here to kill. But when it comes time to do big AOE damage, we have that in spades too, especially when our imbuement is ready. We do have a couple of um, necessary legendaries, for instance, making the blades spin around us. That was a very big upgrade. I will remind you where to get that and show you what it's doing for me and like the best ways of enchanting something like that as well. But this is how we're playing right now. It is extremely safe versus elites, very, very mobile, very good damage versus like large groups of enemies as well. It really seems like I'm getting the best of every world with this Twisting Blades build. Now, as far as our talents are set up, some stuff has changed from before. I feel like I've learned a bit as I progress through the game, and I just want to catch you up really fast. Our generator is still puncture, and we're taking it for the fundamental puncture so we can make our enemies vulnerable. Any enemy that's vulnerable is going to take increased damage on top of everything else we're already doing. So if we get a crit, that's good, but if we get a crit on a vulnerable target, that means that critical hit is dealing even more damage. Twisting Blades is our main spender. We're going to be spamming this all of the time. And we've tried to optimize our build so we're generating tons of energy all of the time. So these Twisting Blades really don't ever have any downtime. We can keep impaling them into targets. I went for improved Twisting Blades. I think the Daze here is incredible, stacking up so much crowd control for our Rogue. We also picked up Sturdy as well as Siphoning Strikes. Siphoning Strikes, because our critical hit chance is so high, heals us pretty regularly. There's a very good synergy there. Then moving in on Shadow Step and Dash over here in the Agility Tree. Previously, I dedicated a lot of points to these two skills because I was thinking I would have more value in them if the cooldown was reduced. I've since respect a lot of points out and invested those into passives that are kind of up all the time elsewhere in the tree. For instance, the sturdy and the siphoning strikes is a good example of that. So level one is all I have in both shadow step as well as dash. The shadow step is very important. I almost got rid of it. And maybe I'll get rid of another ability at some point soon if our crit chance goes up high enough. But we still have Shadow Step for now. The main reason we have it is for this stun. When we jump to an enemy, that enemy is immediately going to be crowd controlled. Works great on elites, but on bosses, it's also a huge way of applying stagger to that health bar so they get stunned and can't fight back. One point into dash, we also have some cooldown reduction for this, just so I can use it a little bit more to move around. Then to the right, we have three points in concussive. After knocking back or knocking down an enemy, you gain 12% increased critical strike chance. Well, that seems 
Okay, but when you look at the next talent, Trick Attacks, when you critically strike a dazed enemy, we're applying daze all of the time. One crit goes off, that enemy gets knocked down, and then they have to stand back up again. It is incredible how much CC this is, and when that CC procs, we get increased crit chances now. On the next area of the tree, we have our Subterfuge skill. We're using Concealment. This allows us to go invisible for a few seconds. There are some cool legendaries that work around the idea of jumping in and out of stealth. For the most part, I'm not paying any attention to those. We're using Concealment because it primes us for a guaranteed critical hit. So I can imbue my weapon, conceal, and then my first Twisting Blades is going to deal that bonus damage. Next to this, we also have Exploit. I'm thinking about getting a few more points in this. I'm also thinking about getting some points in Weapon Mastery up here for kind of the same effect. But uh, we are really here for that Malice damage. 9% increased damage to vulnerable targets. We're always applying vulnerability. It's always there. Yet another way we apply vulnerability is with this Shadow Imbuement with the upgrade of Blended Shadow Imbuement. Anyone that gets hit by that purple explosion is also going to be vulnerable and take increased damage from our follow-up attacks. To assist this, we have one point in Shadow Crash, so we can also make our way up to Consuming Shadows. Each time you kill an enemy with shadow damage, you generate 30 energy. So we could keep on right-clicking, keep applying those spinning daggers, and keep the damage radiating around our character. You'll notice I did still invest five points into the Shadow Imbuement. I felt personally like I really rely on this, and I want the damage to be as high as possible. Although... If you wanted more passive points, I think you could afford to um, remove some points for that Shadow Imbuement. Speaking of passives, we have a bunch here. Inner Innervation gives us energy gain on lucky hit chance. I can't quite tell how often this is proccing. It may be better if I go up to that top of the tree where I said I was thinking about moving some points around, and it might be better to get that damage up there. Still inconclusive on that. Adrenaline Rush is giving us energy and regeneration as we're moving, so if we kill one pack and then go to find another, we're regenerating energy quickly along that. That path and then haste while at or above 50 percent maximum energy we get increased movement speed while below we get increased attack speed attack speed is one of the strongest stats in the game anytime you could get it you probably should it adds a bunch of extra damage and then down here at the bottom of the tree to close things off we have close quarters combat if we attack a close enemy with a marksman or cutthroat skill we gain an attack speed bonus remember our puncture is a mark skill and our twisting blades is a cutthroat skill so we have both things in our in our kit ready to go ready to get both bonuses if we get both attack speed bonuses we then deal increased damage to crowd control targets which we're crowd controlling people all of the time there's our level level 50 recap here's some of the gear i have to support this always on the two hand weapon i want to put that twisting blades buff we got this from a dungeon i can just imbue this onto gear very easily once again if you did not see our last video this imbuement comes from Jal jalal's vigil over on the northeastern side of the map that one is huge I find this one to be funny. Uh, dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has a 43% chance to daze them. We're already dazing anyway, so it seems overkill, but the idea of locking down a target even more sounded too amusing to me. I have a barrier generation when we find an elite, some armor gains here, and some movement speed increases from these legendaries. Making an enemy vulnerable has a 40% chance to increase your critical strike chance. That seems pretty good. Skills deal increased damage based on primary available resource. I thought this one was pretty good for a specific reason. We're using inner sight as our specialization. So there will be times when we're at full energy and just spamming out our skills over and over. So I thought that legendary could give us a good boost. And then I thought this one was really good too. Basic skills gain up to 45%. We're at 38% increased attack speed. What does that mean? I could apply that puncture. Just throw a knife, get vulnerability on a target almost instantly without having to think about it, and then going back to that twisting blade spam. Now, with all of that out of the way, it's time to take on a dungeon. Never done one of these before. Uh, I think I'll breeze right through it. I just want to set the expectation. I think I'm going to do very well. By the way, look how good this crossbow is. I thought this was one of the best weapons I ever saw. 
I mean, it is a bow, so it's going to have lower, like, damage per shot, but more shots. That doesn't really apply to me because I'm not shooting it. But when I saw this crossbow, oh my god, that thing is incredible! Okay, let's see how this goes. First time in this dungeon, the Hollowed Cloister. We have to collect animus from the reverent knights, so we kind of have priority elites we need to take down. Looks like it's kind of the same goal as that dungeon I started showing off earlier, so we should be pretty good at this. Uh, that big knight behind me sure did swing his hammer pretty far back. Notice how we immediately knock him down, and as we move from target to target, they can't really fight back either. I'm saving my imbue for the time being. Looks like that wasn't one of the guys we needed to kill. So where are they? Oh, here's a reverent knight. Triple elite with some extra stuff going on behind him. I'm going to try to kite this around, maybe gather up as many enemies as I can here. Shadow imbuement is online. Let's conceal here, run straight up to the elite, knock him down immediately. That triple elite is dead. Next target is going to be the knight's pennant who I do not want hitting me with that large weapon. As you can see, both targets go down near instantly. We really are playing like an assassin. And I'm gonna have to come back here once I gather up all of the energy to open that door. I'm moving through this pretty quickly, kind of keeping the assassin mindset in mind. Notice how knocked down he was. The animation just kept looping. That's how CC'd that guy was. That's how strong we are. Another one of his friends right here. Let me get out of those explosions. And the CC train keeps going. Oh, that is a lot of stuff to dodge in there. You guys are really covering the ground. Shadow Imbuement is back up. We should be able to use that to finish off the remainder of the Inquisitors here. <laughs> that guy ran. Uh, that was a loop, so this other side probably loops as well. Here we go, another elite here. Make him vulnerable, shadow imbue, and immediately... He's dead. Okay. I think this is our last guy. Start beating him up in the corner. I'm surprised we didn't get the dazed yet. Your friends came to watch you die. All right, that's all I need to do. Good luck over here, guys. I'm going to go open the door. With that out of the way, we're moving into the second half. Travel to the High Council Court. Okay, I'll give it my best shot. Looks like a pretty good straight line so far. That's one of the best things about our mobility is like when we don't have to kill an entire area of things, we can move around so efficiently. And if I ever get too much aggro, I'm able to drop a lot of it with concealment. If like too many enemies are chasing me, we can fix that problem pretty quickly. Looks like we did make it all the way up to the boss area. Let's see how this goes. Like I said, I think I am overprepared for this. I wasn't expecting four enemies though. So there's a Grand Inquisitor, Lord Champion, Devoted Champion, a Sacred Physician. Which one's that? Oh, this guy right here, he's gotta go. I need to make sure I get out of the way of these huge hammer swings. But we do have a small barrier that was helping us at the beginning. I'm going to try to keep focusing damage on the physician if I can. Going in for a stun did help. I stayed a little bit too long, took a big hit, but I think we're okay. Now I'm going to try to divide these guys again. If I can get the big melee guy. Oh, this is better. The big guy might be slow. Oh, never mind. He still has ranged attacks. If I can keep the big guy away from me and focus these side targets, that means I'm going to have a lot less to dodge. The Grand Inquisitor is actually almost staggered. If we shadow step in on her, or him, whatever they are, uh, we should hit it. There we go. That was a huge stagger. We almost have inner eye down at the bottom right. We don't even need it. Wow, that caster was so squishy compared to the others. I also just noticed that the ghosts of them are continuing to fight me. That's actually so cool. All right, big guy's got to go. We're going to focus as much damage on him as we can conceal bring it right back around hit him in the back we have a lot of potions nearby as well that i should be able to dip to if we need it the champion oh, oh almost defeated okay kite it out conceal it up in five more seconds we're going to we almost have inner eye as well look at this it's almost ready 
So, Shadow Imbue, conceal. Big damage on the commander. He turned to face me immediately. Commander is stunned. We have inner eye, and there we go. That's our big damage window. That's what we're trying to set up. Uh, more clerics funneling into the room. Wait, interact with the teleporter to move to the next area of the dungeon. That's not it? Okay. Is it going to be an actual boss now? Slay all enemies in the reliquary. Oh, this is the opposite of how I normally play. Okay, I'm still going to jump on elites first and just try to remove those nasty effects as soon as possible. Same thing with the knight's pennant. All I have to do is make them vulnerable and then start hitting them with the twisting blades, and that's going to be enough to CC them in most cases. Clearing out these enemies shouldn't be that hard. It's just going to take some effort. I gotta go to like each corner of the room and make sure these small little skeletons are actually following me. I suppose I never mentioned what stats I'm actually stacking on my gear to try to, to try to succeed. There are new stats like overpower and lucky hit chance that I didn't know as much about. So I tried to stick with what I did know, which is critical hit chance, critical hit damage attack speed cooldown reduction. I feel like it's difficult to go wrong with any of those. But one of the new things that I really am leaning into is this vulnerable damage. And we also have a bunch of damage to crowd control targets stacked up as well. So as I'm making these enemies vulnerable, as we're CCing them, we're getting like compounding bonuses of damage all stacking up against them. It is a very, very fun build to play through the game with so far. I think I did it. I think I killed all the enemies and this door just opened. Okay. Go to the curator's chamber. Oh, yeah. This looks like a boss fight if I've ever seen one. Okay. Hopefully, we can see our stagger damage build up. This is a lot of bodies. Oh, you're the curator? Hey, friend. I don't think he was actually damageable yet. We didn't get that shadow step stagger damage. You'll notice right when Shadow Step becomes available again, I'm trying to use it every time it's off cooldown. I'm also trying to really focus on just right-click spending when you see our inner sight has frocked. Uh, word to the wise, your dash will take you directly into projectiles like that, whereas your Shadow Step actually brings you over the projectiles and behind the target. So if there's ever a lot of missiles in play, make sure you Shadow Step rather than dash. Uh, this should be a pretty big damage window for us. We got the stagger. We got almost a quarter of this guy's health down in that CC window. And now that he's moving around again, we just want to... Ooh, hold on. He's setting up a lot of bone walls. This might be for an AOE. We need to be very mindful of that. And Bue can seal. Make sure he's vulnerable while we're doing that. Shadow step back on for the stunt. Whoop! We're okay. A lot of stuff on the ground, my dude. Shadow Imbue is ready. That was a lot of damage. Uh, I might have to kill some ads here. <laughs> oh, okay, that cleave hit me. All right, let's take down this ballista. Uh, this ballista. Everything else looks like it's just a normal skeleton. I'm going to wait for the shadow step. Let's imbue shadow step and then start spamming. Good dodge behind. We have inner sight. Keep spamming. Uh, we're, we have the stun here. There it is. I should be able to finish off the fight, I think. There's inner sight. Yes, indeed. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's the most legendaries I've ever seen drop off one enemy before. While you have both bonuses from close quarters combat, key passive activate. Your dodge chances increase, but whoa, that seems really good. We always have that active. That seems good, but we already have that effect. Damaging a poisoned enemy with a shadow imbuement has a 75% chance to create a toxic explosion. Oh, and then a trap ring. Uh, when I mentioned earlier that I think I might outgrow concealment, I think once our critical hit chance is so high, I just simply won't need this anymore. I was thinking about maybe taking a poison imbuement as well with these points that I invested over here. But that's future me's problem. I haven't fully theory crafted that yet. And with the last boss down, I think I could leave. Now with that done, I can go to the world tier statue inside of Kaovishet. 
and Nightmare Difficulty has officially been unlocked. We get new sacred unique items. Nightmare sigils can drop from Nightmare Dungeons. Helltides will start appearing. Champion monsters with damage resistance auras can appear. Enemies are more formidable, but give 100% more XP, 15% more gold, and they overcome 20% resistance. Very, very cool. Well, this is where the real end game begins. Thank you guys so much for being here. The journey will continue very soon. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on the way out. And uh, Nightmare Dungeons looming on the horizon. That's very exciting.